Hey, everybody. So I want to ask, how did it come to this? If you know me from my channel, you know I'm a Mac platform user, and I have been since 2006. I was running all of my astrophotography software from my Mac for acquisition and connecting remotely to a Raspberry Pi running Linux that was running the Indy server, which took care of all my connections and mount control. So moving over and transitioning into a Windows platform machine and completely changing my acquisition software to something I, I, I'm entirely unfamiliar with is quite uncomfortable right now. I spent my entire fall trying to prepare to make a solid, stable platform with the, the Raspberry Pi and my Mac so that I could spend as little time outside in the wintertime and as much time imaging as possible to get as much astrophotography done as I possibly could, you know, through the winter months. And so things didn't work out. And I, I wanted to talk to you about that, the impetus of this transition and, and how I got to this point. So if you would like to hear some more about that, stick around, and I will get into that. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF. So about nine months ago, I kind of entered into this whole astrophotography thing. And I didn't have a telescope or a mount. I did have this set of Celestron binoculars, and I love them. And I take them out with me and uh, for visual viewing all the time. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, what if I could get this on a tripod and, you know, so I could get a, a more stable view. And so I picked up a mount for binoculars, which is really cool. I mean, it just screws in to the end here. This end screws onto the, the mount or onto the tripod. And boom, I had binoculars on top of a tripod and they were stable. And I could get a lot better views through it, you know, especially like the moon and stuff like that that uh, weren't near as shaky as me trying to hold this and, and, and look through them. And I found that to be a lot more enjoyable. You know, at the same time, I've been trying to take some images with my iPhone, and I found that to be really not desirable at all. The, uh, the night mode I had hoped uh, was going to help me to, uh, to get some images, even of the moon, but, you know, I couldn't even get a decent image of the, of the moon with my iPhone, even if it was in a, in a tripod. It just is uh, always, you know, so exp overexposed, and then if I bring it down, uh, the exposure level, um, it would be so dim. If I tried to zoom in, the noise uh, was excessive, and it just wasn't anything that I really liked. But I thought, you know, what, what if I... What if I could use my iPhone and my binoculars together? And so I ended up picking up this, which is the most fiddly mount in the entire universe. Um, however, once you get it set up, it works really well. And I would connect this to my binoculars and get my iPhone in here and get it lined up. And that would take a lot of time. But once I got it and tightened everything down, it did really well. And so I ended up getting that set up, and then using the other side of the binoculars as my finder scope. And so I would get the moon in, um, you know, in view on this side, and then the moon was in view on this side for me. It worked beautifully. It, uh, um, it was great. And with the magnification that I got through the binoculars with my iPhone, I was able to get a decent shot of the moon. I was, it was like, oh, this is great. You know, I, I really hadn't experienced that before. And, and then, I, I mean, I actually had details and, and clarity. It was, it was actually pretty good. And I kind of got hooked at that point, and I wanted more. 
And so I ended up, you know, going through this whole process and, and I got the, the telescope, got the mount, you know, and this is all, this is over time. This is over, you know, a couple months. And, um, you know, I, I discovered the problems with, with light pollution, so I ended up getting a filter and a filter drawer. And anyway, I, over time, over this last nine months, I've built the system that I have now, which is, it, it's humble, but I'm really, really pleased with the results that I get from it. And, you know, with uh, the telescope, with a field flattener, and the proper, um, a proper filter, for what the target I'm shooting, and then I ended up with the camera, which is the uh, ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro. Ends up being an awesome camera. I couldn't be happier, you know. And I started taking images and and working on that, and and, and my data started getting better. And then at the same time, I was learning about processing, and my processing skills started to improve. And I was having, you know, internal success. I felt good about the images that I was taking. And that's, you know, that's why I was doing this. It's my passion and interest to, to, to look at these objects in the sky and to, and to, and to be able to, to pull the stuff out of these exposures and see them. It's, it's just amazing that we can do this from our backyard. It, it never, it just blows my mind every time. But... Yeah, so anyway, I was using Astroberry when I first started to control my mount, and that worked good for a while, but the the, the maintenance support of that didn't uh, really exist. Uh, there's forums for it and stuff like that, but it fell out of maintenance, and I started having some problems with drivers for some of my equipment. So I decided to go over to StellarMate which is fantastic. I love StellarMate. And it runs Indie Server, and I used KSTARS and Ecos, and initially I was running that on the Raspberry Pi and uh, just remoting into that through a VNC and uh, connecting through a browser. And that worked really good, but I was having stability issues with that, and I ended up running KSTARS and Ecos from my Mac, so the clients were running locally for me, and then I was remoting to the Raspberry Pi, and that improved stability a lot. It worked a lot better. I didn't have near the crashes, but what I did start having was more network problems, and so as a result, I decided that I would go ahead and run a, um, a network cable out, and I was experimenting with that, and while running that, those tests, I had that cable on the ground, and it had been hooked up for about a week or so. And uh, you know, I guess uh, I had intended to like bury it, but my dogs were out running around the yard one, one night, one evening, and I was actually just walking out the door to go grab the telescope and bring it inside because I had some stuff I wanted to do to it. And my wife had gone out back, and she yelled and dug the telescopes on the ground. And my dogs had run through the wire and got caught up in it, and it pulled the telescope over. So the whole mount and telescope and everything hit the ground. And as a result, that Raspberry Pi basically blew into pieces. I searched the yard. I, f I finally found the actual Raspberry Pi board about 25 feet away. And the case to it had uh, been broken into a couple different pieces. And I had a, a little Vixen mount on it that uh, the, half of that got broken off. And it just really took an impact. And it damaged some other things on there. But, you know, staying in context of, of what we're talking about here, that computer was done. And so I had already been exploring, looking at small mini Windows computers. And not because I wanted to replace the Raspberry Pi, but because I was interested in trying out some different things. So I was thinking about setting up a Windows system with Nina. And Nina was the, kind of the, the main driving factor of that because I was interested in Nina. It looked like it was a very stable platform, although in a lot of discussions that I've had with people that not on YouTube and on YouTube, 
there's problems to be had in the Nina e ecosphere as well. People that I talked to who had moved away from the Indy server and, uh, and K-Stars and Ecos found that uh, they had problems over running Nina as well. So it's not like it's going to be, or I'm gonna have an expectation of being able to fire this up and, and run Nina and not have any problems. I think there's gonna be problems. You know, with that, that, that really brought me to this point where since I had already been looking at this, I, I had added it to a wish list on my Amazon account. And so after the Raspberry Pi had blown up, I told my wife that I was going to have to order a new Raspberry Pi. And this was just in the beginning of December, I think. And she said, no, I don't want you to order a new Raspberry Pi. I just want you to be patient. <laughs> and so I kind of got the idea that she had already been over on my wish list, and, and, and in fact, she had already purchased this Melee for me, you know. And, you know, that's one thing that I, that I really love is that my wife and my son, they support me in this hobby you know, so much. And, uh, you know, I, I just love that. It makes it uh, fun and uh, to talk about, and they're interested in in the photography and uh, they're interested in supporting me and however they can, you know, even if it buy me equipment for um, for a Christmas present and what have you. And so, honestly, I ended up with this uh, with this melee as a result of of my family and their interest in supporting my astrophotography, and that means the world to me. That's how I got to this point, and. We're going to go through and work on to set this thing up and we're gonna get Nina running and I'm gonna figure it out as uncomfortable as this is for me. <laughs> you know, I had intended on doing this on the side and not having, you know, the, the pressure of needing to get this up and running and working because I, I really wanna have uh, imaging started again here in the next week, so. Um, I've got a learning curve in front of me, and I know I can figure the Windows machine out. I think I, I have more apprehension about getting going with Nina. Um, there's, you know, I've watched tons of videos. I've read the documentation, and I'm probably going to do just fine with the setup. Uh, I, I understand most of it, you know, but I, I just actually haven't worked with it yet because I don't have a Windows machine to actually mess around with it even beforehand. So my first look at Nina is going to be once I, you know, fire this machine up and get it configured. So, you know, and then it's... Uh, hit the ground running and try to get uh, Nina all configured and set up and uh, hopefully we'll have an imaging session going. So anyway, uh, that's how I got here. I appreciate you hanging out and listening to my story. So thank you very much. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF. Oh.